Hello, welcome to the Wildfly YouTube channel. My name is Jerai Borges and in this video I'm going to show you how you can connect a Jakarta e application running on Wildfly runtime to a database server on OpenShift. First, I'm going to show you how you can deploy a PostgreSQL database server and then we will configure the Wildfly data source system to connect to this database server when we are deploying an application on OpenShift. I hope you enjoyed the video and let's start. The first step is obviously to get access to an OpenShift cluster. For this demo, I'm going to use the Red Hat Developer Sandbox. Red Hat Developer Sandbox uh, provides you with a private and pre-configured OpenShift cluster that you can use for testing your workloads or running experiments to learn OpenShift. All you need to have is just a free Red Hat Developer account and that's all. I have already mine, so let's start my OpenShift cluster to get access to the OpenShift web console. Okay, now let's deploy our PostgreSQL database server by using the template shipped by default on this cluster. To do so, select Add Database PostgreSQL. There are a couple of templates. I'm going to use this one that provides me with persistent storage instantiate the template and we arrive at the parameters configuration. I'm going to modify some of them for our convenience. For example, the database service name will be DB server. I'm going to use a specific name for the user, password, and why not the database itself, the name of the database itself. Let's create it. We are redirected to the topology view and the deployment config is deploying our server. Among the different resources created by this template, there is one which will be very useful for us. It's under secrets, you have uh, the templates created a DB server secret. This secret will contain information, the information that we need to connect our application. For example, there are three keys, database name, database password, and database user. We will use this secret in our HAMP chart when we are deploying our application. Now I'm going to deploy our demo application by using Wildfly HAMP chart. To do so, select Add, this time HAMP chart. We filter by Wildfly, select the Wildfly HAMP chart and install it. We have to provide the release name for this HAMP chart. And here is the area where you configure it. I'm going to copy and paste what I have already prepared for this demo on my notes and install it immediately. Um, I will review um, what we have done while the resources are being created. We are redirected again to the topology view. If we select the hand chart, we come back to our configuration, select action, upgrade, and here. And let's, let's explain what we have uh, modified here. The HAMP chart configuration is split in two main areas, the build section and the deploy section. At the build section, we have specified the, the sources of our, our application. Let's do a quick review of it. It is available uh, GitHub. Um, let's check, for example, the persistent XML. As you can see, we are not specifying any data source name or configuration here. It's just a persistent unit that will get the full data source uh, from configured on the Wildfly. This is useful because it decouples the data source name from our source code. Other interesting resources are, for example, the DB connection health check. This is a readiness check that we have, we, we use it to advertise whether our application is able to process requests. This is important in our scenario because our application is exposed by the single OpenShift service. And this service acts as a load balancer redirecting user requests only to the ready pods. If we have multiple pods and some of them, for example, because they are running on different OpenShift node, lost the connection to the database, 
By using this readiness check, we will redirect in user requests only to ready pods. So it's recommendable to use this kind of readiness check. Um, the other resources are just um, typical JAX-RS resource, which is exposing a developer entity accessing directly to the entity manager. Now, let's explain a bit the Galleon Layers configuration. Behind the scenes, um, your application will be built uh, by Maven on OpenShift. The resulting artifacts will be copied to the deployment folder of your server, and a final image will be pushed to the OpenShift internal registry. So you can specify which capabilities you want on your server. And the way to do it is by specifying, by configuring a set of Galleon layers. For the Wallfly hum chart, you can use Galleon layers available from the, on the bare metal server, as well as Galleon layer from the Wallfly data source Galleon pack. You can check the Wallfly documentation to know which Galleon layers are included in bare metal. If you go to the documentation, there is a section named the uh, Galleon Provision Guide, and here we have Wallfly Galleon Layers. Here are the different, um, the available Galleon Layers uh, included in the bare metal server. And for our example, for our demo, I'm going to use, we have used JAX-RS JAX -RS server, which provides me with Jakarta RESTful web services, CDI, GPA, and also infrastructure for data sources configuration. And also, since we have added a health check, we are also adding the microprofile health Galleon layer to support that supports, that adds support for the microprofile health. Regarding the Wildfly data source Galleon pack, the documentation is available at GitHub. And if you go to the Wildfly data source Galleon pack and doc, you will see here, well, we are on PostgreSQL. Um, the Galleon layers available for Postgre database server are here. In our case, we are using this one that will allow us to configure a data source and also set this data fold as the default one. You can see in the documentation the different environment variables that you can use to configure this data source. For example, PostgreSQL database, the database name, the password of the user, the URL, the user, and also optional configuration. For example, if you want to configure the the pool site, the max pool site, or the min pool sites, sites, and um, well, all of all of the available variables are defined there in this documentation. So if we back to our configuration, help chart configuration, we have as Galleon layer JAX RS server, microfile help, PostgreSQL default data source, and at the deploy uh, section, I configure the different environment variables to configure the data source. For example, here we are getting the database name from the secret DB, circuit, DB server uh, under the database name key. The same for the user and the same for the password. And finally, also the service host, which is the name of the service that is exposing the database server in our case, DB server. So let's back to the topology. Um, we can see the application was already deployed. Let's check if it is ready. OK, it is ready. OK, let's do the final test by creating a developer and see if everything is fine. Um, I'm going to use the command line to do it. Uh, if you open the contextual menu under your username, you will get a token and you can use that token to get access from the command line to your cluster. If you have installed the OpenShift uh, client tools, you can use this token and you can manage your cluster from the command line. Sometimes it's very useful. Let's 
get the road where it is our application listening. And now let's post a, a developer and test if everything was fine. So we can use curl minus e minus x post to this URL https slash here okay slash resources slash developers and content type as well content and types application json and also mm, some data data which will be a name for example margaret oops name for example margaret and surname surname hamilton which will be our first developer if we create it okay we have uh, a response from <coughs> With the location of the current developer we go navigate it okay it is there so our application is running fine well that's all i hope uh, you have enjoyed the video and see you there